In this PowerPoint, we're going to look at voltaic cells and how they use oxidation reduction chemistry to produce an electrical current and do work. Batteries, like the ones that power this electric car, use redox reactions to produce electrical currents. They convert chemical energy into electrical. They do this through the use of voltaic electrochemical cells. Let's first look at the basic setup of an electrochemical cell and then talk about the cell potential that drives electrons from the anode to the cathode in a battery. A voltaic cell is also known as a galvanic cell. It's one in which electrons flow spontaneously between two separated half cells. This drawing illustrates a basic lab setup for a voltaic cell, where we have separate beakers containing our chemical reactants and products that are connected through wires and a salt bridge to complete an electrical circuit. The voltaic cells found in batteries may separate the half cells in different fashions and link multiple cells in series, but they still rely upon the basic concept of linking electrochemical half cells. So there's a lot going on in this picture, and let's start with the overall chemical reaction occurring. The electrochemical cell represented here depicts a redox reaction between copper metal and silver ions in solution. It involves the oxidation of copper metal to copper two plus ions, and the reduction of silver ions to solid silver metal. In the electrochemical cell, the oxidation and reduction halves of this net process are separated into separate half cells. On the left, we have the oxidation half reaction where electrons are produced. On the right, we have the reduction half reaction where the electrons are consumed. Connecting to the two half cells, we have a metallic wire which allows the electrons to pass from the oxidation half cell to the reduction one. We also have a salt bridge which allows positively and negatively charged ions to move into each solution to help balance the charge transferred between the beakers by the movement of the electrons. Each half cell also contains an electrode, and this is a piece of solid metal where the transfer of electrons can occur. The electrode where oxidation occurs is known as the anode. And in this case, the anode is just a piece of solid copper metal that's also a reactant in the process. As the reaction goes forward, the copper metal is slowly dissolved into copper two plus ions. These are released into the solution in the beaker. As the positive copper two plus ions are produced in the solution on the left, it attracts negatively charged nitrate ions from the salt bridge to balance the positive charge. The electrons produced are drawn then towards the electrode in the right hand half cell. So this electrode is known as the cathode, and this is where the reduction half reaction occurs. In this setup, a piece of silver metal is our cathode. Silver ions present in the solution in the right hand beaker gain electrons from the cathode, and they end up forming more solid silver that deposits on the surface of the metal. The loss of the positively charged ions in this half cell draws in more positively charged sodium from the salt bridge to replace them. So the salt bridge is just a tube that contains a concentrated non-reactive salt solution. In this case, sodium nitrate dissolved in water. There are porous plugs at each end of the tube that allow the ions to pass out of the bridge into the half cell solutions and complete the circuit between the two cells. In this drawing, we also see a voltmeter between the two half cells measuring the cell potential in volts. The voltage between the cells measures the potential difference between the two electrodes for attracting electro electrons. We call it the electrochemical cell potential 
And when the voltmeter reads a positive voltage, it indicates that the cathode has a higher potential for attracting electrons or a stronger tendency for reduction than the anode. As a result, electrons are drawn towards the cathode from the anode and a spontaneous current flows. This cell potential is the major drawing, driving force in voltaic cells and their redox reactions, and we'll discuss it in more depth later in this PowerPoint. First, though, I want to discuss electrochemical cell notation. This is a shorthand method for describing the different half cells in a voltaic cell. Here's the electrochemical cell notation for the voltaic cell we were looking at on the previous slide. And all cell notations follow the same general format. The anode and anode solutions are written on the left. And the cathode solution and cathode are noted on the right. We also note the concentrations of the solutions if they are known. So this concentration can affect the electrochemical cell potential. The double vertical line separating the two half cells represents the salt bridge. And the single vertical lines indicate the phase boundary between the electrodes and the solution within each half cell. So you may see electrochemical cells represented this way instead of drawings, and it's important to know how to interpret this notation. Here's a different electrochemical cell setup and the cell notation for it written down at the bottom. So the reduction half reaction on the right is the same as the last electrochemical cell we looked at. Silver ion is reduced to solid silver metal. On the left, though, our oxidation half reaction is the oxidation of a hydrogen gas to hydrogen ion. And the electrode used in this half cell is a little more complex as a result. It's known as a standard hydrogen electrode, or SHE. And it bubbles hydrogen gas through the solution past an inert piece of platinum metal. And we see that platinum metal listed as part of the anode in the cell notation. This is because it serves as the surface for electron transfer. But unlike the copper strip in the last example, the platinum itself does not take part in the oxidation half reaction. So this is known as an inert electrode. We also see two single vertical lines in the anode half of the cell notation. This distinguishes the three separate phases present in this half cell, solid, gas, and solution. The standard hydrogen electrode is an important one to know because it's the one used to measure the standard half cell potential for a wide variety of oxidation and reduction half reactions. So let's discuss this concept of cell potential in a little more depth. It's the driving force for current between two half cells. But what does this mean? So as you may already know, electrical current is simply electrons moving from one place to another in response to a difference in electrical potential. And this graphic shows the electrons moving from an area of high potential or more negative charge to one of lower potential or more positive charge. The arrows indicate the direction of flow. So current is measured in units of amperes which are abbreviated with the capital letter A. Ultimately, an ampere simply stands for one coulomb, which is a unit of charge, per second. So coulombs can be directly related to the number of electrons that flow through the wire per second. And what makes the electron flow is the electrical potential difference between a positive and a negative region of charge. And this is also known as the electromotive force or EMF. Since like charges repel, areas of negative charge have higher potential energy for the electrons, while positively charged areas have lower potential 
energy. And as we learned in thermodynamics, spontaneous processes lower the poten potential energy of the system involved. So electrons move spontaneously towards more positively charged electrodes where their potential energy will be lower. The unit of this electromotive force or electrical potential is the volt. And a one volt is actually equal to the SI unit of energy, the joule, divided by charge in terms of coulombs. So we can see the direct relationship between electrical potential and potential energy. So the anode and cathode in an electrochemical cell develop differences in electrochemical charge and therefore electrochemical potential based on the half reactions that occur at each electrode. This difference is known as the electrochemical cell potential or cell EMF. And we abbreviate it as E subscript cell. In a voltaic electrochemical cell, the cathode is always more positively charged than the anode. And of course, the more positive charge has a lower potential energy for electrons, and they flow spontaneously from anode to cathode. We describe the cell potential, or E sub cell, as simply the difference between the potential of the cathode minus the anode. The larger the cell potential difference between cathode and anode, the greater the driving force for electrons, the larger E sub cell, and the faster the flow from anode to cathode. So for any combination of cathode and anode half reactions, we can predict the electrochemical cell potential or driving force for current using tables of reference values known as standard reduction or standard electrode potentials. And these are simply published results of a wide variety of electrochemical cell potential experiments that are measured under standard thermodynamic conditions. So the degree sign on E cell, E cathode, and E anode simply indicate these standard conditions. As a reminder, standard thermodynamic conditions mean that the electrochemical cell potentials are always measured at 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. Any gases present have a partial pressure of one atmosphere. Any pure liquids or solids are in their most stable form. And any solutions involved in the redox reaction have a concentration of one mole per liter. If any of these conditions change, the value of the electrode potential will change. And by convention, standard electrode potentials are always measured relative to the potential of the standard hydrogen electrode. So individual electrode potentials can't be measured by themselves. They must always be measured as part of an overall electrochemical cell with an anode and a cathode. And during the measurement of standard electrode potential, the standard hydrogen electrode is always used as the anode, while the electrode being studied is the cathode. So the electrode potential of the hydrogen electrode has been assigned a value of 0.0, .0 volts. And when we use this value for the anode potential in our electrochemical cell potential equation, it allows us to cancel out the E anode term. This means that whatever voltage is measured between the two half cells as the electrochemical cell potential is also equal to the cathode cell potential alone. So it allows us to determine a single electrode potential. So since the measurement is always for the electrode acting as a cathode where reduction occurs, these electrode potentials are also known as standard reduction potentials. So here's a sample of a few standard electrode potentials, and these can be found in reference tables located in your textbook or online. In your textbook, you'll find an appendix at the back dedicated to standard electrode potentials. 
And you'll notice in these tables that the half reactions measured are always written in the reduction form. So with the electrons on the reactant side. And this is because when the electrode potential is measured, these half reactions are always in the half cell with the cathode where reduction occurs. So the numbers, the voltages, represent the potential for that particular half reaction to draw electrons towards itself in the process of reduction. And the more positive the values, the stronger the tendency of that particular half reaction or the stronger its potential to attract electrons. So the stronger its potential to act as a reduction half reaction. In contrast, the more negative values indicate a stronger tendency for that half reaction to actually push electrons away from itself. In other words, to undergo the opposite half reaction of oxidation. So we can use these standard electrode potentials to calculate the overall electrochemical cell potential for any combination of cathode and anode half cells. For example, let's figure out the electrochemical cell potential for a voltaic cell that consists of two half cells, one that has a solid copper electrode in a one molar copper two plus ion solution, and the other that has a solid silver electrode in a one molar silver ion solution. So the first step will be to figure out the half reactions for each half cell. So since our electrode cell potentials are written as reductions, so we have reduction half reactions for them, it will be easiest to write both of our half reactions as reductions, even though technically in reality, only one of them will truly be reduction. The other one will actually be oxidation. But we're just using these to identify our lines on the uh, standard electrode potential table. So we can write them as reductions, both. So we'll do the copper half cell first. It would be copper two plus plus two electrons on the reactant side produces copper metal. And for silver, that half cell, it would be the silver ions plus the electrons would produce the solid silver metal. Now, we're going to use these two reduction half reactions simply to identify the cell potentials for each on our table and to figure out which one is more likely to be the reduction half reaction or the cathode in our voltaic cell. So here we have the silver reduction, and here's the copper. And here are the standard electrode potentials associated with each of them. Okay, so to identify which one is going to be the uh, more likely to undergo a reduction or serve as the cathode, we're simply going to look for the more positive electrode potential. Because the more positive it is, the stronger its tendency to attract electrons towards itself. And that's what a cathode does during the process of reduction. So that has to be our silver, which is more positive with a 0 0.80 voltage. That will be our cathode. And that means that the copper has to be the anode where oxidation will occur. So in this voltaic cell, electrons are going to be drawn towards that more positive charge that develops at the silver electrode, and it'll be drawn away from the less positive charge at the copper electrode. Now, we can calculate the electrochemical cell potential for this combination as simply the difference in the electrode potential of the cathode minus the anode. Another way of stating this is the difference between the reduction potential and the oxidation. So in this case, that's simply 0 0.80 volts minus 0 0.34 volts, which gives us an electrochemical cell potential of 0 0.46 volts. So this is an important relationship to remember. For spontaneous redox reactions, the electrode potential for the reduction half reaction will always be more positive than the electrode potential for the oxidation one. 
Another way of stating this is that for spontaneous redox reactions, the electrochemical cell potential difference between reduction and oxidation will always be positive. We can use these relationships to predict whether any redox reaction, whether it's actually set up as an electrochemical cell or not, whether that redox reaction will occur spontaneously. So let's look at an example of this. Dissolving a solid metal in an acid solution produces metal ions and hydrogen gas, and this is a redox process. I've written the general equation for this using the generic symbol M to represent any particular metal. The acid is represented by the active component of that acid, the hydrogen ions. So these are our reactants combining together, solid metal and acid in the form of hydrogen ions. On the product side, when this reaction occurs spontaneously, the metal dissolves to form metal ions. And here we have the generic symbol X representing the charge on those metal ions because different metals can have different charges, plus one, plus two, or plus three. The acid, the hydrogen in the acid, becomes hydrogen gas. So what we want to do is predict which of our metals in the choices given here we can substitute in for M and get a spontaneous process. So first, we need to actually separate our generic reaction into its separate half reactions. So we know that the metal goes from a neutral element to a positively charged ion, and this is the process of oxidation. The increase in charge requires a loss of electrons. So we'll write the generic oxidation half reaction as solid M on the reactant side goes to the ion M um, with electrons, however many are needed to give us the positive charge on that particular metal. The reduction half reaction then is going to be the hydrogen ions gaining electrons to produce hydrogen gas. Our next step will be to find each of these half reactions on our chart. Since the reduction half reaction is always going to be the same, since our chart shows everything written as reduction half reactions, it's easiest to just go ahead and find it directly as we have written it. And here it is. Here's the reduction half reaction for hydrogen. This is the standard hydrogen electrode half reaction, and it has an electrochemical potential for that half cell of zero volts. For the metal, um, it's actually going to be flipped from the way that we've written it. And you may find it easier to go ahead and flip it on your own and look for this form on our chart. So we can substitute in for M each of these metal choices to find the appropriate half reaction on the chart. And here we've got the silver half reaction. Here is the copper. Here's the cop the excuse me, the iron, and here is the chromium. And we know that for a spontaneous reaction, the reduction electrode potential, which is zero, will always be more positive than the oxidation electrode potential. And that means that any metal that has an electrode potential lower than 0.0, .0 volts will dissolve in the acid spontaneously, will undergo this oxidation process. Any metal that has an electrode potential greater than zero volts will not spontaneously dissolve. It will not spontaneously produce metal ions in solution. So what that means for us is that iron and chromium will dissolve spontaneously. Silver and copper will not. In summary, 
Voltaic cells are electrochemical cells in which electrons flow spontaneously between two separated half cells connected through metal electrodes and a salt bridge. The electrode at the oxidation half cell is the anode. The electrode at the reduction half cell is the cathode. The driving force for electrons from one half cell to another is the electrochemical potential difference between the two half cells. Electrons flow spontaneously from anode to cathode, from oxidation half reaction to reduction half reaction, when the cathode has a more positive electrode potential than the anode. And standard electrode potentials, which are also known as standard reduction potentials, have been measured for a wide variety of half reactions and are tabulated in reference tables for ease of use in calculating the standard electrochemical cell potentials, E sub cell, or predicting the spontaneity of redox reactions. The formula we use for this is the standard electrochemical cell potential is equal to the standard electrode potential for the cathode minus the standard electrode potential for the anode. For spontaneous processes, we always get a positive value for E sub cell.